Welcome to Control Delete Tutorials. Today we are going to be focusing on adding our actual movement to this tank object. The last video we had set up our script to drive our tank's animation and uh, the previous video before that we had set up our animation controls and our blend tree and the one before that we did our 3D, uh, 3ds Max uh, animations of uh, these objects. So if you haven't seen those videos, please go ahead and check those videos out. And then uh, we'll go ahead and get started on the uh, next section here, which is going to be programming our movement for our tank. So um, this is going to this script is going to go on our tank parent, um, which has our rigid body and our collider on it. And so I'm going to go back into scripts. I'm going to right click and say create Seab sharp. And I'm just going to say tank movement. And while I'm at it, just so I don't forget, because I do sometimes, I'm just going to go ahead and drag that onto our tank parent, just so it's there. So we just see the script is applied. Um, so I'm going to double click on tank movement and we'll get going. We'll just do reload all and we'll get going on the next script. So this one's actually quite a bit um, shorter and I've actually changed the way that I've done this one. I tried to um, use the rigid body to do the rotation and I found that it just gave a lot of results that I didn't like. So this is actually a better way I think of doing this and if it's not let me know another way and I you know would really like to learn some different things. So if there's something else you know or some other way that I can do the code uh, let me know in the comments. So we're going to start off make sure we're in tank movement make sure it matches the tank move it uh, movement C sharp uh, file. So we're going to start off with a couple of public variables. So, and again, I like to do these so that they're in the inspector and I'm able to change them. So we'll have a public uh, float. And the float is going to, the name of the float is going to be move speed. And I'm going to just set that to equal 3.0. And then since I have a move speed, I want to have a rotation speed. So I'm going to do a public float. And that one is going to be rotation speed. And if you want to use, well, rotation speed. And the reason I'm using the capital S here in the middle of this is so that in the inspector it's going to separate these into two separate words. Uh, this one I'm going to set up to 90 just because I've been messing around with some different settings and I like the way 90 works for this. So I don't actually need to have start so I'm just going to get rid of that. And so we're just going to have update. So on update I'm going to create two more float values that are not going to be in the inspector. So I'm going to have a float called rotate tank. And this one is also going to use something that we had in the last video, which was our input. Let's see if uh, I was hoping it was still there. I could just paste it in. Um, so under our input dot get axis um, we are going to use our horizontal and vertical uh, axis input axis so we'll do oops helps if I learn how to type horizontal and this is going to be different than how we did it in the last video where these were controlling the animation. For this, it's going to control the actual movement. My other one is going to be another float value, and it's going to use the input, but this one is going to be move tank. So move tank, and this one will use the vertical control. So up and down will move our tank, and left and right will rotate. So it has kind of tank controls. So vertical. Okay. And under here, uh, I'm going to use the rigid body. Now, I've had an issue in the past where I've created a uh, rigid body 
um, directly. And since I'm only using one here, I'm just going to create this directly and update. So what I'm going to do is say get component and I want to get the object's rigid body. So that is how we have that set up. And I want to get rigid body. And that should turn that color if we're doing this correctly. And so I'm going to uh, use the object's, uh, the rigid body's velocity to control my speed. So velocity. And uh, I'm going to use uh, equals transform dot forward. So that way, when I press up, I'm moving forward. And when I press down, I'm moving backward, no matter which direction I'm facing. So that's important. Transform dot forward. And I'm going to multiply that value by the move speed. And I'm going to multiply that by the move tank. And let's make sure I'm not missing anything. That should be that semicolon. All right, so the reason I'm using move tank, so if this is set to zero, or this is set to zero, um, it's not going to move because zero times three times the transform forward doesn't do anything because it's zero. So that's important. The next one is going to be, uh, we're going to do transform dot rotate. And we're going to use the vector three, right? Vector three dot right. So it wrote dot right. No, vector three up. I don't know why I had right here in my notes because we want to rotate around the up direction. Um, vector three dot up times. We're going to do the uh, rotation speed. Rotation speed. So just double click that. Uh, vector three up times rotation speed times. Um, rotate tank and times time dot delta time. If we look at this, just so you know what this is, the time in seconds it took to complete the last frame. Okay, so we're going to use that. So that will basically multiply um, every time a frame passes, so it'll continuously move. Um, I think we need that. I'm pretty sure we need that. So that should be all of that. Uh, transform rotate uh, vector three up times uh, times rotation speed. Yeah, that all looks good. Um, that's actually all we have for that script to do our um, rotation and our movement. So we'll just save that file save. And we'll go back to Unity. And we haven't had any errors, so that's been good. So um, that should be on our tank parent. And tank movement. That should give us some numbers here. Is this not updating? File, save. Huh. Weird. Save as tank movement. Wait, let's make sure we're doing this right. File, save as tank movement. I don't know why that wasn't updating. It's really weird. Stuff's weird sometimes, I don't know. All right, so now this is updated and we can see move speed. So this is how it puts it in the inspector which was three, and rotation speed, 90. Um, and that's already put on there. So if I go into my game, I'm just going to maximize. Hopefully we have some controls that work. So I press left, rotates left. Press right, rotates right. Press forward, we go forward. Press back, we go backward. And I should be able to basically just drive this thing around. 
And it's funny, the way things rotate, they almost look like they're not moving. But on some of them. And that's uh, basically it. So what I want to do is I want to um, just have a couple objects in here just so I can test some things out. So I'm going to set this up with game object, 3D object, cube. And we'll just take the cube. It already has a collider on it. And we'll add a rigid body. And so we should be able to push this cube around. So I'll just kind of move this. So this should be up uh, 1.5. There we go. All right, so this should allow us to move this object. And I'm going to make another one. So I'll do cube, control D. Move that one over here. So I can move that. Control D again. And control D one more time. And then what I'll do is I'm going to make another set that I can't push. So we'll take rigid body off of these. And on the ones that we had here, I'm just going to set their mass smaller than mine. So I'll do 0 0.25 so they're easy to push. And this one, I'm just going to scale in the, oops, in the x direction here because my camera is currently not moving. And I'll move that over to the other side here. And then I'll make another one, Control D, set the X here to zero. And we'll set our scale of that direction back to one. But we'll set our X to be there. Let's go a little bigger. Duplicate that and move it down to the bottom. All right, so now I should be able to move these boxes around. And now let's make one more object 3D object sphere. I'll also make it have a rigid body. And we'll set it like that. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a physic object or a physic material that allows us to have some bounciness to it. And I'm going to apply that to my ball, my sphere. So we'll go under uh, collider material. And I didn't name it, I should really name that. We'll just call it bounce. Bouncy. All right, and so now if I play, it should be kind of bouncing there. And I can move these. I can't move these ones. And I don't know what I was really expecting that to do, but. And there we go. So we're able to move everything, which is good. So you can make a game where there's like different puzzles where you have to move blocks, you know, into holes or something like that. And you have to figure out how to move things around to do that. Um, you can make a maze game or something like that. You can make an obstacle course where you have like a bridge or something. And this is trying to keep you from falling. You know, you have to keep from falling off of the bridge. Um, but that's basically it for this tutorial and the tutorial series as a whole. One thing to do, make sure you save your scenes. So I'll just save that into my scenes folder. I'll call that tank. Uh, tank and boxes. I don't know. And that way that's saved. And we'll go ahead and save our project. All right, so that's the entire series. If you guys would like to see something else, uh, please subscribe and leave me a comment. Uh, 
and just tell me what it is you'd like to see. If you'd like to see this continued or like to see me try some other things with this, um, I might do a second part um, of this series um, that's separate from these where I'm working on uh, making it so I can shoot a projectile, something like that. So we hit the space key and a projectile shoots. So if you'd like to see something like that, please leave me a comment and just say, yeah, let me see that. And then uh, I'll get to working on that tutorial. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. And like I said, please like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.